In today's video, I'm going to talk to Scott Dahl, a professor at the prestigious La Roche School for Hospitality about Hotel Tech Stack, what exists and what you need in 2020. Hello and welcome to another Hotel Tech video. I'm Alicia from Hotel Spider. And if you have hotel tech related questions, you're in the right place. On this channel, we talk about hotel tech and share our know-how with you. Today, I'm in beautiful Cromontana in the Swiss Alps. I'm gonna sit down with uh, Scott Dahl, the program director for the masters here at the La Roche School of Global Hospitality. We're gonna talk about hospitality technology and the tech mindset. There's a lot to discuss, so let's go inside and have a conversation. Safety first. Uh, my name is Scott Dahl. I'm the program director of the Masters in Hospitality Strategy and Digital Transformation at La Roche Global Hospitality. And I'm also a professor of revenue management and digital marketing. What is a tech stack? The best way to think of a tech stack is the tech stack is the toolbox for the hotel. Obviously, hotels are an experience, right? And most of what we do, we think of as the experience at the day of. But we have to remember that we bring our reservations in in advance. We have to know about those people and everything. So the tech stack is all of the different technologies that link the hotel to the marketplace and everything in between. Why is it important to pay attention and know about your technology as a hotel? The greatest hotel in the world can have the most fabulous customer service in the world, but without reservations, it can't be successful. So understanding your tech stack and really making sure that it's all working is really key to delivering the arrivals report that a hotel needs every morning in order to, uh, to do the rest of what it does to, to be successful. Could you explain the role of the different technologies and how they work together in this hotel tech puzzle? But I think starting with the operational pieces that are about uh, once the customer gets to the hotel. And they're the foundation of it all because that's where we collect that information and really that's where we manage the business from. So there's a couple really, really important pieces there. The first one is the property management system. Where do we hold our reservations? Where do we hold our guest information? How do we keep track of people and where they're located in the building? We also need a point of sale system in most hotels. Unless a hotel is very, very small and your outlets are very small, small, it really does help to have automation to work with those. The other one really would be the accounting system, which quite often can be part of the property management system or not, but that's really how we make sure that we get our bills paid, that we pay our bills and those kind of things. Then I think most piece, most hotels need some sort of assistance in making decisions. There's so much statistical information that it really is, um, it's a great use of technology to do the repetitive math that's involved in evaluating day-to-day -day pickup and those kind of things. But um, another piece of that is business intelligence. So we're, we wanna make sure that we're using our internal information from our property management system, but a lot of business intelligence systems have now gotten really good at pulling market information and helping us consider market information. The next essential piece is channel management. So we can make all these wonderful decisions, but as most people know, the distribution world in hospitality is super fragmented. There's online travel agencies, big ones, small ones. There's our own brand distribution. There's all kinds of things. So how do we get our product effectively to market? If we are managing our strategy, sometimes that's the breakdown in not getting the prices to the market quick enough. So that's the essential next step in that technology. You have all of your different distribution channels that you would be connected to that probably should be considered part of the, the technology stack as well. What are the tools and also mechanisms that people can use to, to push their direct bookings using technology. Making sure that you have a website, defending your own brand terms. If someone is aware of you, make sure they find you and book you directly. Don't pay a commission for that reservation. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's just making sure your repeat clientele understands that they should book with you directly. Our hotel relationship is much longer than just between the check-in and the check-out. And ideally, we'd like to use technology to maintain a relationship with people and bring them back. We'd even like to use technology to start to an established relationship with those people before they arrive. So I would say some kind of customer communication or customer relationship plan is essential. That can be very, very sophisticated, using a lot of automation, or quite frankly, that can be quite manual and quite personalized. It all depends on the size of the organization. Tell me a little bit more about in-room tech. I think you have to understand your customer and you have to know your customer. Because tech, your, your stance on tech 
is a positioning statement. You have to look at technology as a feature or an attribute of your hotel just like any other. The seamlessness is the key. I don't wanna educate myself about my hotel room. It's not why I'm in the city. For example, I stayed in a hotel recently, really cool television, you know, watch your own Netflix, so on and so forth, but you have to log into the TV. And I went, nah, I don't think I wanna do that. But if it would recognize my phone because it was connected to the same Wi-Fi hub, I would definitely stream from my phone to the TV. So I think that that's the issue for me from a technology perspective. I don't think we need to have all the greatest technology. I think we need to pick the most important stuff and it needs to work perfectly seamlessly for someone that doesn't have the owner's manual. So I see tech in rooms that's not utilized. That makes me sad. And it does, people don't go horrible hotel, no tech. They just look at that silly clock radio with an iPhone 3 plug on the top of it. <laughs> and they go, well, what's wrong with this? Let's find the stuff that consumers really use. Most of it, they carry with them. They're telling us what they use. Let's enable it. Let's make sure that we never have to move a piece of furniture to plug a charger in in a guest room ever again. What do you think are the advantages of cloud-based solutions versus server-based products? My opinion is um, if you have a server, you should probably be thinking about getting rid of it, quite simply. The only benefit that I can see, quite frankly, if I had to come up with a benefit to, uh, to really holding stuff like that local, would be the perceived control of the data. Okay, the, the box is here, I own the data. But the reality is now with GDPR, for example, I personally think that you want someone who is in the much better role of holding that data to hold that data than for you to hold it. I think you're, you're potentially better off. So I, I, that excuse uh, almost gets lost as well. I don't see a lot of reason to have servers except for the fact that the investment is, has already been made in them and they're there. Um, whereas the advantages of cloud technology in our industry are immense. Um, the first thing it's done is it's brought innovation to us much more rapidly. Uh, if you think about property management systems being the foundation of this whole stack, it used to be that if you wanted to build a CRM module, you had to have a good housekeeping module or you weren't going to sell that product. Now as a result of, of standardized interfaces and cloud technology, now many vendors can work together. So you can really kind of choose best in class pieces and put them together and they'll work together. What does a smaller hotel, let's say less than 50 rooms, really needs. Let's say that I have a 100% manual hotel. It's been operated by someone that was technophobic and now uh, that person is retired and the next generation is going to run it in the family and they're interested in, in, in kind of making it current. Uh, to me the foundation is the property management system. First of all, the rest of this stuff won't work very well without it. But I would also say it's the greatest savings of labor associated with technology of all. Uh, running a manual front desk is cumbersome, simply processing credit cards on a daily basis and those kind of things. And then I think you start to look at um, what are the challenges that you have and what are the resources that you have. Because at each point, there's one piece of technology, in my opinion, that you'll get a better return on investment. So initially property management system, but then you might find that the next return on investment might in fact be channel management. Because if you're distributing in a lot of different channels, one change in strategy can result in 10 or 15 minutes worth of key pounding for an individual if you're not using technology that makes that really smooth. So I think you have to kind of peel the onion for each individual operation, but it's critical to understand the resources that are available, and it's critical to understand that unless you're going to increase resources, you've got to be very mindful about what you add into the operation because a lot of these things, unfortunately, don't scream nearly as loud as an upset customer, a fight in the housekeeping office. So although they're very important to the business, they'll be neglected if you create too much of a process. I think most of us, if we're really honest, we can find a couple of things that are broken and that's where I would start with technology. You'll focus on core functionality. You won't focus on really, really sexy bells and whistles. You'll make the right decision that way if you're solving your own problem. If I know what category I need, how do I select the best tool for me? First of all, I think you, um, you know, search on the internet. Everyone's advertising, so you can find them. But more importantly, I would ask around. I'd ask two really important groups. I'd ask hoteliers that you trust, and I'd ask your existing vendors for two reasons. because 
the, the hoteliers that you trust are going to be able to tell you which products they use and the vendors that you work with are going to be able to tell you how well that will integrate into your, uh, into your environment, how quickly it will integrate in your environment and quite frankly can probably share with you some use cases of people that are, are using the products. I would look for this, the acceptable technology that's already been somewhat integrated into an environment similar than mine. That would be a really, really high uh, uh, one of my highest criteria would be tell me the tell me about your hotels that are just like mine. Give me some names of some of the leaders of those hotels to speak with, so that I can talk with them about how they utilize your product. I think it's really important to find the right size tool for the job. Think, think, go back to my toolbox comment very early on. Think of a hammer. Most people have a hammer in their home toolbox. Very few people have a sledgehammer, but they do the same thing. It's just not many people have to crush things. Some people hang pictures once in a while. So it's really an issue of, of understanding the task that you need to do and finding the right technology for that task. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you for your time. I love to sit down with folks that understand the space. And obviously, you guys in Hotel Sweater, you, uh, you know the space real well. So it's, a, it's always a good time. So thanks very much for having me. That's it for my conversation with Scott about hotel technology. We continued the conversation and spoke more about revenue management and revenue management system, but I will share that part of the conversation with you in the next video. Subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss the second part of the conversation. I hope this first part gave you a good overview over the hotel tech stack in 2020, why it's important and how to approach your hotel tech decisions better in the future. If you have any specific challenges or questions about the technology we spoke about today, please let me know in the comment section below so we can pick it up and discuss it in more details in a future video. If you got value from this video, please share it. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you. I'm Alicia from Hotel Spider, your hotel techie. Stay tuned for the next video.